Well, good morning, everybody. Cheers. So, we have a tournament coming up on the California Delta. It is a kayak tournament, of course. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Now, just to give you guys a little bit of history from my perspective on the Delta, the first time I saw the Delta was 2003. I was in high school and I was watching a Bassmaster Elite event on the Delta on ESPN2. 13 years later, through work, I had the opportunity to come to Northern California and fish the Delta. This was about 2016 and yeah, honestly, when I first got here, I had no idea where to even start. I didn't even know exactly where the Delta was. If you're not from here, it's kind of hard to explain, but the Delta connects to the ocean. It is a tidal fishery. That means the water will be incoming or outgoing at different parts of the day. Sometimes the tide swings will be four to five feet, which is insane, but it's thousands of miles of river systems, of sloughs, of tracks, hundreds and hundreds of islands. I mean, it is so expansive. And from a kayak perspective, you can launch in so many different places. I've fished the Delta for the past three years. I've maybe covered 5% of the Delta. So it is absolutely huge. It is a beast. And uh, we've got a tournament coming up for the Hobie BOS, a two-day tournament. That is going to be the hardest part of this tournament. And not just for me, but for everyone out there, is figuring out where you want to launch your kayak. Because we've talked about this in previous videos, but essentially when you launch your boat at a certain part of the Delta, I hate to say it, but a lot of your day is kind of already decided. Because there are certain parts of the Delta that can be really hot and really cold. Today's video is actually going to be my three days of pre-fish or my three days of fishing before the tournament. I figured I'd just mash them all together. So that's kind of the point of my three days of pre-fish is to go figure out an area that has some, some active fish, some feeding fish. Just better my odds for tournament day. So it is going to be an extremely tricky tournament. It's anyone's game for sure. And uh, I think there's going to be some big fish caught. The first day of fishing, the first day of pre-fish for the Delta actually already happened, it was the other day. My intro was kind of goofy, it was in the dark. Just to give you guys a little bit of context, I went to a place that has all the right ingredients to have fish, big fish, lots of fish. And of the nine or 10 times I've fished there in the past, I don't think I've ever done well. Actually, I know I've never done well. Actually, it's maybe one of my least favorite places in the Delta, but that is the thing about the Delta. It is always changing, you just don't know. So I wanted to check this place out because I felt like it could be a really good tournament spot if the fish were there and I could figure something out. Anyways, let's just jump into the video of the three days of pre-fishing for the Hobie BOS two-day event on the Delta. Gonna cover three different launches, see if we can figure something out. Hope you guys enjoy. crazy the first thing i'm noticing is there's a ton of bait back here i'm assuming it's shad not seeing any like bass or striper blow up on it but holy smokes it's just loaded back here hmm. dude i'm like nervous to cast this choppa with all these freaking birds here Super high tide. There's gotta be like a million striper back here. All these little bait fish, first thing in the morning, it's gotta be a little choppo or plopper style bait. It's gotta be. I'll be literally shocked if we don't get a fish on this. This is confusing. This makes zero sense. I'm baffled. Tide's moving. There's a million shad everywhere. Like, I don't see how they aren't hitting top water. Doesn't make any sense. We haven't tried the good old popper yet, so maybe that's our problem. Hmm. 
a little baffled right now. A lot baffled. I mean, it's only been an hour, but not a bite, really? <sighs> Let's try the shady side. I'm not convinced. <laughs> They're hitting top water right now. We really tried to force them, but we got to try some other stuff. <sighs> Do we punch? <laughs> I don't know. I've never had a really good morning punch bite. Do I know what to do? Trouble. They could be buried. Could be buried in the weeds and the grass and the hyacinth. That's the other option. In which case the frog and the punch will probably excel, but still know what's going on. It's part of fishing though. Gotta figure out that puzzle. I'm gonna have to figure it out today because it's not very straightforward right now. Starting to run out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, for you guys, uh, probably will notice we're back. We got the, the Dobbins Extreme again, Champion Extreme rod. I broke this rod when the tungsten weight hit my rod and it snapped on the next hook set. Appreciate everybody reaching out and telling me about their warranty. Unfortunately, and this obviously wasn't Dobbins' fault, I sent the piece of the rod for the warranty and the lovely United States Postal Service uh, lost my package. So, you know, didn't want to wait anymore. Sent that like maybe three weeks ago. So, bought another one. Wow, such a random cast. He is way up in there. <sighs> Maybe that's a sign that they are just buried up back there. Got a crawfish in his mouth though. See the little tentacle sticking out. <sighs> Jeez. Well, no skunk, but man, it is tough today. Could be a sign though, a piece of the puzzle. That one was way back there. Two hours it took for a bite. Another one back there. Just not expecting that bite. Wow, I just had a bite. Came off, that was a bite. Finally had a little bite. This takes a thousand flips or so and you get a bite. So random. <laughs> Just so random. Well, again, continually experimenting in different areas and only been able to get bit on the punch. That fish, again, was way back there. sides went to the bank finally got a good one ah oh, finally a solid fish only took about four and a half hours to catch a keeper got him got him he was setting up right there he was setting right up there by the toolies. That's what they're doing on this side. It's a good one too. It's 
fish are starting to set up. The only problem is there's not many of these toolies over here. It's just a, maybe a patch or two every hundred yards. Actually, not even that. I'm not even seeing any more, really. Well, these fish at least are setting up now. It's a pretty good chunk. Fatty. A little fat, though. It's funny. You fish this whole bank. All the bites have been right on the outside of where there's a patch of tulies. That's what we got guys. Got some explaining to do, I think. A um, couple things. So, we of course are not an in and out burger. You know, today was a tough day. It was a tough day of fishing. You guys know the tradition. You guys know the rule. Tough day of fishing. We stop at in and out We did stop at in and out but the line going through their parking lot, but the store next door's parking lot, and then out into the street. Love in and out but I did not feel like waiting over an hour at the drive through to, uh, to get it. So, we're at the habit, and hey, the habit's real good too, so shout out to the habit. I'm not sure what I was thinking. Like I mentioned, never done good there before, and uh, <laughs> didn't do good there today. Whatever, what it is what it is. I did want to check it though. The rest of the video is the other two days of pre-fish on the delts so somewhere else. I still don't know where exactly I'm gonna go. Like I mentioned, open launch for this tournament, so I really want to try to find an area that I have a lot of confidence in. I mean, I've got areas that I have confidence in, but I definitely want to check a few more spots before we commit to those areas. Let's hope the next outing will be a little bit more productive. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in a second. All right, guys, so we're out here, back in the Delta. It's actually about a week later since uh, the previous fishing trip, but like I mentioned, we're gonna mash all three days of these pre-fishing days together, and we are at another part of the Delta. It's actually a place I've never fished. I'm just checking it out, seeing what it's about. It looks good on the maps, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything out here. Let's see what happens today. Hopefully it's a little bit more productive than the last trip. Just <sighs> my little start, no clue what it's like up here, but only one way to find out. Okay, that was uh, that the third cast. Well, I can tell you one thing, guys. That's not going to be the size we're looking for for this tournament, but I'd say that's a positive sign. You know, that's, that's a small fish, but it's meaty. It's got a little meat to it. Hey, we didn't skunk. Wow. He was out in the middle. Interesting. not the size we're looking for, but it's a bite. There's three bites and three micros. Okay guys, here's a scoop. 10.30, three bites, three dinks, covered about 10 miles of water. Again, never been here before, but might as well just cut to the chase, but 
I'm not feeling it. I'm not liking it. Kind of the point of pre-fish is to eliminate water. Uh, so we checked it, and uh, even though it's 1030, you just have absolutely zero confidence in coming back here on tournament day. So we got one more day of pre-fish tomorrow, and then back to work, and then the tournament. So I'm going to have to think about where I want to launch tomorrow. I'm, I'm kind of debating if I want to try somewhere new or maybe check a, a few areas I'm familiar with. I'm not sure yet. I will catch you guys tomorrow morning for the final day of pre-fish. This was kind of a bummer today. See you tomorrow morning. All right, here we go guys. It is Wednesday morning. Tournament is this Saturday and Sunday, and this is my last available day to pre-fish, and uh, we're at a different launch. So far, I would say 0 for 2. First two spots, obviously, have not produced, so it's our last spot. It's a spot I've fished before. I actually haven't been here all year, but uh, it's at least a spot I'm familiar with. Doesn't look like they sprayed back here, so that's good. The other two spots, they definitely had sprayed that weed killer, and I don't know if that hurt the fishing or what, but they're spraying everywhere on the Delta right now, so finding that greenery is going to be possibly the key to this tournament <sighs> yeah we're going to see what happens today you know like i said if it's a bad tough day of fishing today I mean, we might just uh, roll the dice on tournament day go somewhere well, i don't even know i actually don't even know so <laughs> i'm banking on that we're going to find something today because i have got absolutely zilch going into this tournament so beautiful morning sun's just peeking up hopefully it's a good day of pre-fish okay let's just get after it like I said, I haven't been here all year. Actually, I can't remember the last time I was here. Hopefully we can at least just catch a few decent fish just to get our confidence up, you know? That we have an area that actually holds some quality fish. And that's the thing about kayak fishing and the Delta, especially with this open launch. Like, once you're locked in an area, you better have some fish nearby. <laughs> All right. Well, okay, man. It's been a long time. That ain't gonna do it for the tournament. Jeez. That was the most random thing I've ever, not ever, but um, that, that's a first. What the heck? I cannot believe that just happened. This is basically how my pre-fish is going. Got it right in the boat. <laughs> that was like a, a 10 incher. Maybe a sign? I don't know. Gosh. That's a bite. Definitely got beer right there. Oh. Alright, two bites, two bites. I one stole my trailer. Starting to look maybe a little bit on the up and up. Let's just start catching some quality though. That's a good one. That's what we needed to see right there, guys. That's what we needed to see. That's confidence. That's confidence. Finally got a decent fish. Okay. Solid one. We would take five of those Saturday and Sunday. Okay. 
goodness me. <sighs> okay, good old chatterbait. I don't really think there's a point in beating these fish up too hard. Just try to find some other areas that have some fish. Let's mark them. I assume it's a good thing. These bluegill, I think, are eating these little tiny shad. The only thing that's a problem is I, I've stood up and I can't seem to see any big ones just roaming around. Oh, I had a little one right there. Huh. I mean, they're here. The question is how many big ones are around here. Just because I caught that one nice one does not mean anything at this point. So. There's definitely fish back here. It's a barely keeper. Oh, that was a bite. Oh, wow. Man, you hear that squeal? It's a good sign. Probably a three incher, but whatever. Tons of bluegill. Definitely want this chatterbait. Even with like these slick calm conditions, like they, I think they're so keyed in on these little bluegill we've been seeing that they're just, I mean, the chatterbait is a great way to catch them. Flip to that patch, he's right there. Not a giant, but a good one. Dang. Well, yum, bad mama, flipping. Chunk, solid one. All right, that's a good sign, I think. So that flip was literally that grass patch right there, outside grass. I don't usually flip that stuff. I usually flip up in the hyacinth, but. Maybe that's something we gotta run with and see if we can reproduce it on this low tide. A couple more bites doing that and I'd feel pretty good about a flipping deal back here. here folks isolated stuff so that was on the highest synth but it was isolated Dude, that thing choked it man I'm glad we came back here keeper okay I think we got a little something guys just got to keep in mind that this is probably a low tide deal so I gotta fish these areas at low tide because it pulls these fish out to these isolated targets so I think it's something we could run with at least Oh my god, 
God, we are on. All right, I'm leaving. I'm not gonna try anymore. Goodness me, that is a pattern if I've ever seen one. Oh man. All righty guys, we know exactly what we are doing tournament day. I think, I mean, tournament is in three days. Things can change, but I think we got something figured out on this low tide. Just took me three days to get a good bite going. Pretty confident in it. I'm not fishing the same stuff, guys. I'm moving around and I'm trying to just see if they're doing the same thing in other areas and they clearly are. Jeez Louise. There's gotta be one right there. Ooh, sea lion. I haven't seen a sea lion in a long time. Maybe that's the ticket we were missing. We gotta find the sea lions. Well, I guess it doesn't matter where I fish. Oh, look. It's in the back of his throat. A little crawfish pincher. They're all doing the same thing. we're gonna call it. Today's day went a lot better as far as pre-fishing goes compared to the last two outings. I'm glad we finally got onto something today, a little bit of something that I, I think I can go with on tournament day because otherwise I would have just picked a random launch on Saturday and uh, just gone in blind but I, I've got some I've got some confidence in this area that I found back there on that low tide deal. Punching and the chatterbait and you know I just uh, I saw a lot of fish. Saw a lot of fish. No big big ones but just gives me a lot of confidence that I can go back there and be around fish and maybe get lucky with a big one but if you haven't fished the Delta I mean it gets a great it has a great reputation but make no mistake the Delta can be extremely tough and especially from a kayak I mean with a two-day tournament I'm just looking for five keepers per day. I think if you get five keepers per day for this Hobie BOS on the Delta, I think you'll be in good shape. That's the video for today. I will upload the tournament itself um, in a couple days, so stay tuned for that. As always, thank you guys for watching, for tuning in. It should be an exciting tournament, so I'll see you guys in a few days.